Hello! We're continuing our reviews on the Fly series with The Curse of the Fly. Now, The Curse of the Fly came out in 1965, and this is the third and final film of the original Fly series. The first two films in this series be in 1958's The Fly, which was based on the short story of the same name by George Langlin, and then 1959's Return of the Fly. The movie was directed by Don Sharp, who also directed several films for Hammer, like The Kiss of the Vampire and Rasputin the Mad Monk. And the movie was written by Harry Spaulding, who would go on to write The Watcher in the Woods. Now, Curse of the Fly, I know you weren't really into this, but I actually kind of liked it. I mean, don't get me wrong, it has its problems and doesn't hold a candle to the first one, but I at least thought it was better than Return of the Fly. I mean, I liked the makeup effects and the creature designs, I'll give it that. Um, but to me, I just didn't feel very engaging. I mean, I was kind of tired at the time we watched it, so maybe that also had something to do with it, but I just did, I just couldn't get into this one. Fair enough. Now, what the plot of The Curse of the Fly is it begins where a young woman named Patricia escapes from a psychiatric hospital and is later found running down the road by a man named Martin Delumbre. And Martin is not really weirded out by the fact that she's running down the road with no clothes on, and she's also not really phased by this. Now, we as the audience realize it's because she's insane, but he doesn't really realize this yet, yet again, he He's not really weirded out by this, but it turns out that Martin has a few secrets of his own. It turns out that he's from a family of scientists who for years have been trying to master teleportation. Martin and Patricia end up falling in love and get married. But as the movie goes on, we as the audience start to realize that Martin and his father and their servants are harboring mutants created by their failed attempts at teleportation, one of these mutants being Martin's former wife. In the film, Brian Donlevy plays Martin's father, who kind of ends up being sort of the villain of the film. Now, some people might recognize Donlevy as Bernard Quatermiss from Hammer's adaptations of the Quatermiss. Quatermiss Experiment and Quatermiss 2. The film also stars George Baker as Martin, Carol Gray as Patricia, Mary Manson as Judith, who is actually Martin's former wife who ended up becoming one of the mutants, and Michael Graham as Martin's brother Albert. I don't know, I, I thought it had a nice, like, creepy tone and atmosphere to it, and I kind of like the idea that it's almost as if the Delambre family is cursed. No matter how many times they try this experiment, it's just not working and something goes wrong every time. I thought that was actually a really interesting idea. I also thought some of the mutants in the film were pretty creepy, and the idea that one of them was actually the wife of uh, the main scientist in the film. I, I thought it had some creepy stuff in it. Yeah, I thought it did too. It just it wasn't enough for me to really enjoy the film too much. Um, not to mention there was that glaring plot hole you mentioned. Yeah, the continuity error. Yeah. Like, uh, they mention the events of the first one, but when they mention them, they show a picture of the fly from the second film. I don't know what the purpose of that was. Not to mention... Okay, so in the movie you have Brian Donlevy's character, who's supposed to be the son of Andre Delambre from the first movie, but his, he's not Philippe, though. He's not Philippe from the first movie. Yeah. It's like a different character. So, what was this, some brother we never saw? Yeah. Like, what the fuck? Yeah, not only that, but uh, when you brought up the picture of the fly from Return of the Fly, it's like, when in that movie did anyone have a chance to snap a picture of that horrific creature? I mean, yeah. come on. It's like, did they even think about it when... I don't think continuity was really at the forefront of their minds when they were making this movie. Well, of course it wasn't. Yeah, but I, I still enjoyed it for the most part. I, I, I appreciated the premise. I appreciated the creepy tone of the film. So... I don't know, I recommend it, but I know uh, you didn't like it as much as I did, no, though. No, I couldn't get into it. 
Alright, so that was our review on The Curse of the Fly. My next movie review is going to be on David Cronenberg's remake of The Fly. I want to fly solo with that, but you could contribute a little short review yeah, for sure. that if you I'll want. Be happy to.